Hi, welcome to our next video. In this video, we will be covering uh, manual metal arc welding and the main points required in order to get through our uh, C-SWIP 3.1 and 3.2 course. These are the, is not all of the points you'll do during the course, but definitely are the, the, the main takeaways. So what do we have? So in, in the process overview, we have a electro core wire, normally produced with a fairly cheap reaming steel. That core is surrounded, coated in a flux, core, uh, a flux coating, which can have three different types, which we'll cover in, in, in a little bit. We produce a welding arc between the, the uh, core wire and the workpiece. That runs at about 6,000 degrees Celsius. And as that happens, we melt the flux coating and one of the outputs is an evolved gas shield, which helps protect the, the weld pool and uh, expel the atmosphere, stopping things like porosity. Below the arc, we produce a weld pool. Now that weld pool is, a, you know, is created at above probably about 1500, 1600 degrees Celsius. So hot enough to melt the steel, bind in, get off fusion and, 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 and weld our materials together. So we produce a weld metal. And then on the top of that, one of the out of our outputs of the flux coating is a slag. Now this helps the profile of the final weld cap as well as helps retard the cooling rate and give us uh, towards the right mechanical properties that we're after. So in order to start that arc, we need what's called an open circuit voltage, an OV, OCV. And that generally runs between 60 to 80 volts, and USFs come lower. But of course, it's all dependent on the electrodes, electrodes we're using. So an output of that, what we can see here is that we have an open circuit voltage on my voltmeter at 68.9 volts. When we arc up, we'll see that drop to a working voltage, um, which is fairly unstable. The voltage is driven by arc gap, which means it will bounce around as the electrode melts off and the welder tries to maintain uh, a suitable spacing. And then when we stop welding, we'll see it come back up to an open circuit voltage, ready to, to initiate the next arc. we go so we can see it come back up to 66 volts now mma uses a constant amperage or drooping characteristic curve for the power source and what this means is as arc voltage changes through a change in arc uh, size Amperage doesn't change very much compared to the percentage change of, of the voltage. This has an out the, the the effect of this is that when we have a smaller arc and it's thinner, we still have the same amount of amperage. So we get deeper penetration, but when we increase the arc width and, and length, 
the same amount of voltage as over a, a different area. So we get inconsistent penetration beads. So our flux coatings, we have really three main flux coatings we, we need to keep in mind here. And these are cellulosic, basic and rutile. So cellulosic covering is uh, mainly used for what we refer to as stove pipe welding. So this is vertical down, very fast, very hot welding arcs. Um, they're hot enough to run vertical down because the shielding gas they produce from their cellulose uh, powder is high in hydrogen content. This burns very hot, gives us deep penetrations very quickly. But because it's an organic compound and it uses a hydrogen shielding gas, it means the hydrogen contents are probably the largest we're going to see in the arc welding uh, processes. And here is a real risk of things like hydrogen cracking. We have our basic electrodes. So when these burn, they produce a CO2 shielding gas. So and they, we bake and dry the electrodes, keep them moisture free as much as possible. Um, and these run at below 10 milliliters uh, per 100 grams of weld metal of hydrogen. But also give us very good impact toughness through helping us produce a secular ferrite within the weld metal. And the, the last one we have here is a rutile covering. Now these are generally general purpose. Um, they don't have as good impact properties as, as basics, but we have a lower amount of uh, hydrogen in the, in the electrode itself. A little bit of water is needed and moisture is needed in the covering to keep it together, but we don't bake it. Um, very good arc, starting, easy to use, easy to run. So, you know, maintenance electrodes for little bits and pieces where toughness values are not essential. So how do we then look at these electrodes and decide what's in them? Well. Here's our first um, standard we'll look at, which is BSEN 2560. So this is the 2022 version of that standard. Uh, what we have is a mandatory section and an optional. So the first set of numbers we have here is our strength of our electrode. So yield, tensile and elongation. And we can see from the, the chart here that number 42 means we have a minimum specified yield strength of 420 MPA. Um, we then have a tensile strength associated with that number and an elongation. So whatever the number is, we just come to the table, look down, find it, and we can see. And we can see that most of the time, all we really do is add a zero after that number to get its yield. So it's very easy to kind of identify the, the strength of the electrode. The next one here is our toughness reading. So this is a free, which means we have impact properties at 47 joules down to minus 30. So a, a, a good electrode for, for toughness values. We have our chemical composition next. So a 1NI has 1.4% manganese and a, and a range of, of nickel in there. B means we've got a basic covering, but you can see we can easily swap it out with the, the other types of electrode we've talked about, being cellulosic, a C, and rutile, and R. Then into our optional side, We've got one is our electrode efficiency and, and type of current, so whether we're running on DC or uh, DC positive or DC negative or, or AC. Two is our welding position. So you can see here that this uh, electrode has a good range of welding positions apart from vertical down. And our H5, tied into the fact we're showing a basic electrode here, 
shows we have a very low diffusible hydrogen content if we keep the electrodes uh, in accordance with manufacturer's recommendations. Now we jump over to AWS classification um, and we have a covered electrode again with our E. 70 is now our tensile strength in KSI. So this is 70,000 PSI tensile. So a very different displayed number to what we saw in 2560, the, the EN standard. Our one is our welding position and one is all positions. Eight here is our flux covering. And then again, we have an optional side to this, uh, this classification, which shows us our, our low temperature, low impact uh, temperature, our hydrogen content in that we've done a moisture test. So really from the two standards, you kind of need to see how they tie together. So here I have AWS classifications down the left with the EN fluxes that go with that and a statement of which fluxes they are. It, it's very handy to be able to jump between the two. And during the inspection courses, uh, a lot of these questions tend to come up within your training. So definitely get ahead of this. And that's that. So uh, hopefully that helps you with your revision. And um, good luck with your exams and uh, enjoy your training.